Hi friends, this is Shekhar Srinivasan and in this video we shall understand how to define an explicit constructor while using primary constructor within a class. Now let's try to open our visualstudio.net. So in the last video I just explained how to define a primary constructors. Now say that if I wanted to define a explicit constructor for this particular class, I can just try to define something like say department here. Once I just try to define a constructor, I see that I get an error. Let me just try to hover the mouse over this thing. Since this type has a primary constructor, all instance constructor declarations must specify a constructor initializer in the form what I just mentioned. That is, once we have a primary constructor for a class, all other constructors must ultimately call into the primary constructor using this, which makes sense also. We always want the primary constructor arguments to be available for initialization. Although a struct will still have a non-replaceable default constructor that will initialize all members to its default values, when we try to work with a class, it is compulsory that when we try to define an explicit constructor, it should be in the format what our primary constructor is having. For example, let me say that I wanted to accept only department number. So this will not allow me to do this thing. So what we try to do is we need to simply say this and then we have to specify the parameters what you wanted to use it. The value for the department number I'm going to have the value and we have to explicitly specify what should be the value for the department name and also the location. When we try to define this, now it accepts it. So, the most important point that we have to understand in C Sharp 6.0 is when we define a class using a primary constructor, if we define any explicit constructors, then it is compulsory that all the explicit constructors should call into the primary constructor formats. So now I can just try to simply define this thing this dot department number equal to dnvo or else I can just simply ignore this also. Now I can just try to check out what will happen. Now let me just try to observe it. So we had a primary constructor and we have this information available. Now let me just try to specify department d1 equal to new department. I can just try to observe it. There are two constructors that are available. One is a constructor which is accepting one department number. The other one is the primary constructor. Now I try to define this value with the simple thing dnvo value as 10. Next I try to create one more object where I say sales hyd. Now let me just try to print out the values d1 so I simply say d1 dot department number d1 dot department name and d1 dot location. Similarly, let me just try to print the value for D2. Where I say D2 dot department number, D2 dot department name, D2 dot location. Now we can just try to observe this thing. D1 is being created based on the constructor what we have defined explicitly and D2 we have created with the support of primary constructor. In case if you have not watched my primary constructor, please make sure that you watch primary constructor video prior to this thing. Okay, now once we're done with this, let me try to execute this. 
and let's try to find out the okay we can just try to observe it the first one has been taken with the value 10 and the next one was created with the value of this so the point that we have to understand and remember is when you try to define a class with a primary constructor if we try to define any explicit constructor then it should always ultimately call into the primary constructor with the support of this hope this video helped you in understanding how to define an explicit constructor while working with primary constructors if you like this video please subscribe to my youtube channel this encourages me to develop more and more videos thank you yours shaker